And now, if you understand that piece, I think getting journal entry I and D and E is kind of semantics. If you just get, that's why I want to focus on journal entry A and S, because if you get that, you first of all, you eliminated the bulk part of the investment account and you consolidated the equity. Now you're just dealing with little pieces that are like one shots here and there. You sort of, you got 90% of it. You know, journal entry I is basically, you know, think about the after acquisition environment. There's another good piece here. If I have an $800,000 investment in the beginning of the year, and I had some income throughout the year, isn't my investment account gonna change? Yeah, now it's year end. No, it's like we're waiting till year end to consolidate this thing. So at year end, you know, we're having another 93,000 all of a sudden in the investment account, right? So what do we have to do? I have to now, if I just eliminate 600 and 200 out of the investment account, it's not gonna eliminate everything. Remember, I gotta get to zero. So how do I eliminate the income that was accrued this year? Think about it. 800 was in the beginning of the year. Now a year went by and I've been using the equity method to allocate the income from the subsidiary using the income and investees earnings account, right? On the credit side and I've been hitting the investment account with all these debits. Now a year has gone by and I eliminated so far 800,000 out of the investment account. But that's not it. That was the first balance, the 800,000 we started with and then we've been hitting that account all year. How much do we hit it with? 93,000. If you look, scroll back on the other slide, you'll see why it's 93,000. It's 100 in income and seven in amortization of the excess fair values of different assets. So you'll see it's 93,000 in income. How do you get rid of this 93,000? Basically, all you gotta do is eliminate the income account and you have to eliminate the investment account to the degree that you accrued income. Why do you eliminate the equity and earnings and investee? Because when I put the two companies together, all I have to do is what's the total revenue minus the total expenses? I'm not gonna think of it anymore as like, how much did we earn? Like, you know, like what did we get from you guys? Because we're just gonna say, listen, it's like totally, total revenue minus total expenses. We're one company. You know, this is just an elimination entry. And entry D now, entry D is a way to adjust for dividends. Because dividends declared, what do dividends declared do? They reduce the investment account, right? Where in reality, when we combine the two companies, we're gonna say, listen, that shouldn't affect it anything because that was just a distribution of cash from one company to another. If I fully own another company, them giving me some money doesn't, I'm like, what are you, why are you, what are you giving me money? I own the whole thing anyway. Like I was the one who decided to give myself money. It's not really a big deal. It's just, you know, it's like you paying a bill. It's like it's not really a dividend, you know? So you get rid of it. How do you get rid of it? You reverse the impact that it had. What impact did a dividend have? It reduced your investment account. So what do you do? You increase your investment account to return it back to status quo. So that's sort of the run through of these of the journal entries and journal entry E, journal entry E is going back to recording these expenses as I discussed in the beginning, you know, it's kind of like what, how much do you record in expenses throughout the year on the consolidation sheet? When we talked about those assets that we purchased and we talked about the useful life and we talked about that annual piece, how does that affect the journal entry? Well, you debit the expense, right, and you credit the asset. Where does this happen? Keep in mind, this is happening on the consolidated worksheet, nowhere else. This is showing up right there on the consolidated worksheet, and it's showing up as expense and a reduction in the value of the applicable asset. All just on the consolidated worksheet as entries, and then the consolidated report as the impact. So how does this impact the consolidated report? You have an extra expense for 17,000 and you're reducing the carrying value of these assets. 
buy that 17,000. So this is sort of, guys, this is the process before we go much further 